Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're back uh, with uh, another edition of uh, Ripped from the Headlines. Uh, and uh, this uh, topic, uh, 500 Days in a Cave and Jewish Loneliness, uh, emerged when a, a woman emerged from a cave uh, after spending 500 days alone. And uh, just the whole concept uh, was uh, uh, grabbed my attention. Uh, to spend 500 days in alone in a cave for human experiment, uh, but she didn't have enough time to finish her book. So that also is something I can relate to because I always have these books that I bring with me on the plane or away for a few days and I never finish them. They just keep piling up. So that part I could relate to. Spending time alone in a cave is something I uh, would not uh, ever imagine. I get uh, claustrophobic. But uh, let's see the story. This was uh, in a couple of different places. This comes, comes from Reuters, April 14th. A 50-year-old Spanish extreme athlete emerged on Friday from a 500-day challenge living 70 meters deep in a cave outside Granada with minimal contact outside. Wearing dark glasses and smiling as she adjusted to the light of spring in southern Spain, elite mountaineer Beatrice Flamini told reporters that time had flown by. She did not want to come out. When they came to get me, I was asleep. I thought something had happened. I said, already? Surely not. I hadn't finished my book, she said. Flamini's support team says she broke a world record for the longest time spent in the cave in an experiment monitored by scientists studying the human mind and circadian rhythms. She was 48 when she went into the cave, celebrating two birthdays alone underground. Flamini began her challenge on Saturday, November 20th, 2021, before the outbreak of the Ukraine war, the end of Spain's COVID mask requirement, and the death of Britain's Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, she did not. She did come out for eight days, her team disclosed, but stayed isolated in a tent, waiting for repairs to a router used to send audios and videos to tell her team how she was doing. Asked if you ever thought about pressing her panic button or leaving the cave, she replied, never. In fact, I didn't want to come out. She said she had focused on retaining coherence, eating well, and relishing the silence. I didn't talk to myself out loud, but I had internal conversations and got on very well with myself, she joked. That's very nice. You have to remain conscious of your feelings. If you're afraid, that's something natural, but never let panic in or you get paralyzed. Um, in the article, and you can see that article in full or other articles, she did not have conversations. She, as you mentioned about the, the, the router for audios and videos, she would send reports up to her team uh, and they would send reports uh, or information, necessary information down to her, but there was no uh, interaction, live interaction. And um, yeah, so it seems like a, a pretty incredible feat. Uh, to, it, it brought to mind, uh, when, when it talks about the panic button, there is a uh, Twilight Zone uh, episode. And you know that's the Twilight Zone is high on my list of uh, lessons uh, that we can learn from uh, television series. But uh, there's one where there's a, a person who is uh, finds himself in a place he's all alone. He goes into a restaurant, a gas station, uh, and, and and finally he cracks. And then the episode ends because he's been. Uh, this is his dream. He's in a. Uh, you know, he 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 he's being tested by the United States Air Force for long range uh, missions as they develop astronauts. Uh, and the, the, he, he had pushed a panic button. He was in a, a certain room where he was being monitored. The whole episode having been an example of uh, what his mind was projecting he was in. He, he, it was a, basically a world of his own making and uh, he was all alone and finally cracked. Um, and uh, whenever they talk about you know, astronauts or especially if they're, 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 they're dreaming of going uh, uh, to Mars, you're gonna have a long time of people not being able to have such uh, direct uh, human interaction. And uh, you know, so here we have, uh, well, it will be interesting what kind of uh, results will emerge from, the, from uh, this uh, situation. Uh, scientific information, what kind of data will be collected, how it, how it works, you know, what, what was she you know, eating and drinking? You know, what about, she, she does mention that she was looking forward to a bath. Um, because you're talking about not necessarily showering for 500 days, you know, that's probably why you're all alone. Uh, if that's the situation you find yourself in, you probably can't be with uh, anybody else. But the whole thing is this idea of loneliness. A couple of things of which stand out. She didn't want to come out. Uh, the, also, this idea of 
coherence, relishing the silence, being aware, uh, conscious of your feelings, uh, not, to, not to panic. Uh, the, the, these are uh, emotions and reactions that she had that, that resonate. And uh, immediately uh, start thinking about what does Judaism say about loneliness? We're a very communal religion, but what, when and where is there time for us to, to, to be all alone? Just any initial reactions uh, to, the, to the article? Uh, before we uh, tackle the sources. Are there any biblical incidents uh, similar to this? That's number one question. The second question is, how does this relate to all the AI? <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure it necessarily relates to AI. We'll have to uh, think about that. I, I, can, is artificial intelligence the same thing as having company maybe? Uh, but uh, with regards to biblical precedent, you have uh, Noah on the ark for a while, but it wasn't alone. That was a small select group. Um, you know, what does come to mind is some of the stories uh, in the Talmud of the sages in caves, right? Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son spent uh, years in a cave. Again, they weren't exclusively alone. They had each other. Uh, and um, But I can't, I, I don't have any uh, off the tip of my, top of my head, any situations in the, in the Bible that, that relate to this idea of loneliness. Um, because, as we say, you know, very early on, God said, Reshit 2.18, Lo tov hayota dam levado, it's not good for humans to be alone. They're supposed to be a helper, Ezer Kenegdo, uh, that's part of this. So this uh, the, the idea of loneliness is not the natural condition for human beings who are, by their nature, social creatures. Any other uh, reactions to the, the, the story itself before we dive in? So this idea of human beings not meant to be alone does create this type of uh, mindset, this emotional status of connecting to the other. Uh, human beings don't want, human beings crave interaction. We crave the connection with the other, that other being human beings, or sometimes we're looking for God, right? To Hillam 13, source number three, how long, Lord, you, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me, right? The idea that we are, we're always seeking the encounter. And if we can't find the encounter in God and we can't find the encounter in human beings, then we are very much at a loss. We're very much alone. And this goes against the, the Bereshit Torah's uh, definition for human beings not to be alone. And it, it is viewed as something dangerous. Pirkei Avot, it was actually the chapter we read this week. Rabbi Hananya ben Hakin, I said, one who wakes up at night or walks on the way alone, it turns his heart to idle matters. Behold, this man is mortally guilty. Uh, it, it's viewed as almost a capital offense. Obviously, you're not executed for walking alone at night, but putting yourself in a solitary situation is, is not one where the person will have uh, a, a meaningful or full life uh, from a uh, religious, from a Jewish perspective. Uh, and furthermore, Hillel said, source number five, do not separate yourself from the community. Altifrosh mean hatzibor. Don't separate yourself from the community. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 this idea of, uh, you know, uh, of it being, you know, in a sense, uh, you know, the, the dangerous, the idea of, you know, what does it mean that's separate from the community? You're supposed to be in the community. We'll see Maimonides in a minute. But this idea, very famously, Choni Hama'agel, the story of Choni Hama'agel, who um, slept for 70 years and woke up and did not recognize the world around him. Rava concluded that Choni Hama'agel's experience explained the folk saying that people say, O Chavruta, O Mituta, give me friendship or give me death. One who has no friends is better off dead. The idea that Choni was lost in the future world, which he did not understand and did not have colleagues, so uh, better off dead. And in, in these sources, Judaism presents uh, a, very strongly the need for interaction, human interaction, divine interaction. If you're not going to find the uh, necessarily be able to comprehend God speaking to us, well, then we have to be able to find someone with whom we feel we are interacting. I um, remember clearly my uh, when I would teach uh, Parsha each week to third graders, they asked the best questions. You guys ask good questions too, but they ask really great questions. 
And uh, we talk about, you know, Avraham. Avraham, Hashem tells Avraham to go. So well, students uh, ask them, uh, well, how come God doesn't speak to us like he speaks to Avraham? So I said, no, yeah, look, I said, to, my, my response was, shh, listen. Oh, you can't hear? You have to just listen more cl closely. Right, the idea that our our encounter with, with God that you know is our searching out for God that's captured by King David's sentiments in Tehillim 13. Right, are you going to forget me forever? That's not always God uh, proactively calling us, but it's whether or not we're going to be able to listen to or be able to uh, hear uh, God's connecting to us. In the absence of our feeling a connection with the divine, this human interaction, uh, it, it becomes... Uh, of paramount importance. The idea uh, of whether it be emotionally speaking, this idea of walking alone uh, and finding oneself lo alone too often, that's mischayev ben afshow, it's mortally guilty. You're, you're, the life will be incomplete. Uh, whatever emotional sadness and pain is felt because of that, uh, in a sense, uh, you've deserved it because you, you shouldn't be alone. Or this idea of the tzibur, and this idea of, of, of al tifro shmin uh, in particular, uh, al tifro shmin hatzibur, not separate from kimya, has halachic ramifications. Source number seven, the Rambam and Hilchos Shuvah. The following individuals do not have a portion in the world to come; rather, their souls are cut off, and they are judged for their great wickedness and sins forever. And one example are those who separate themselves from the community. What does that mean? So a person who separates himself from the community may be placed in this category, even though he has not transgressed any sins. Right? Just living apart isn't, you know, it's not like you violated a, a, a commandment, but you're separating yourself. A person who separates himself from the congregation of Israel does not fulfill mitzvot together with them, does not take part in their hardships or join in their communal fast, but rather goes on his own individual path as if, as if he is from another nation and not Israel, does not have a portion in the world to come. You have to cast your lot with the Jewish nation, right? This idea that uh, the, the, the fact that we have this um, this uh, covenant, uh, you know, of, of fate and covenant of destiny uh, that Rabbi Salvechik utilizes, and that the you know the, the covenant of destiny is something that each of us, in a way, makes our own destiny based on what we choose. But the covenant of fate, that's part of being part of the Jewish nation. And um, I don't remember if it was Rav Salvechik or someone analyzing this, that you know, with the covenant of destiny, you know, the, 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 the choosing of the mitzvot, that's up to you. Some people will choose to perform more mitzvot or less mitzvot. They'll, they'll be more religious, less religious, more observant or less observant. There are pros and cons, sins and uh, mitzvahs. But when it comes to the, 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 the covenant of fate, there's only one transgression, disloyalty. Right. If you're part of the nation, that, that, that you're part of the nation. But if you choose to opt out, you know that's a, in, in a way what the Rambam is describing in, in, in Hilchas Shuvah. You're part of the nation, uh, and, and part of the nation means you, you cast your lot with them and you take part in their hardships. Uh, you're supposed to see yourself as part of them. There's another piece of it that does have, and, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this also, that the the the, the so there is a, a, an enhanced level of religious identification and affiliation and participation when performing mitzvahs with other people. Yeah, and so you have within this tzibur, al tifrosh minat tzibur, this communal uh, necessity, a prerequisite for one's identification, one's loyalty to the Jewish nation, as well as the participation in the performance of mitzvahs, which is enhanced by one's association affiliation with the community, uh, you know, whether it's davening in a congregation or, or whether it's maintaining a certain type of a standard. The, the flip side of this is the negative prohibition about, against uh, dividing a community. It's from a, a very strange verse because it talks about um, this idea of not, of not making uh, agudot, alotasu agudot, agudot. You don't want to divide the community. And it comes, uh, it emerges from a verse in the Torah which talks about not tearing the flesh uh, when hearing about the, the death of a, of a relative. Uh, and uh, it, it, the, the connection is that just like tearing and ripping at the flesh is a, is a painful violation, so is it to, to divide a community in two. 
And one of the classic examples is dividing the community too. You know, we just had uh, Pesach. And um, the, 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 uh, it means that when, the, when there's a community, there should, if there's a minhag hamakom, if there's a practice in a community, people have to buy into that practice and you can't deviate. So um, in, in many ways, in many respects, this idea of a minhag hamakom, about there being a congregation, a, a, a custom for a place has, uh, in a sense, the, 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 has been in decline because you know, places have more than one uh, type of Jew. You have Ashkenazim and Sephardim in the same community. Or you have people who dive in different Nusach, Ashkenaz and Sephard or, or Middle Eastern. Or there are multiple congregations or there are multiple Minyanim that meet. Um, but uh, you know, one example that, that, that uh, emerged uh, uh, over a, a Pesach holiday is that um, what happens on Cholamoy Pesach when the shul gathers together for services in the morning for Shachris, do you wear tefillin or not? Do the men wear tefillin or not on Cholamoy Pesach? And there are different customs. And generally, the, the, the more common practice these days is not to wear tefillin. In Israel, nobody wears tefillin. Um, the Rama, Rabbi Moshe Isserlis, mentions the idea of wearing tefillin. And so if, among Polish Jews and their descendants, there's a, a, a view of wearing tefillin. But for the most part, the not wearing tefillin view has uh, is carrying the day. Because it's easier not to do something than to do something. And then, so the question was, what happens if you have a shul and you have some people who wear tefillin and some people don't wear tefillin? This is mentioned in Jewish law as an example of dividing the community. How can you have some who do and some who don't? And the, it, it, it's viewed as uh, inappropriate to have some who do and some who don't, because for those who are not wearing tefillin, what? They, they don't believe in God enough to wear the signs of, of loyalty to God and the arm and the head? Or if you're not supposed to, who are those people to wear tefillin? So you know, I remember growing up in uh, New Haven, Connecticut, in a show that was, uh, you know, didn't always, had a hard enough time getting a minion. But uh, there was a time when the rabbi was suggesting, okay, let's see if we could have 10 tefillin wearers and 10 non-tefillin wearers. We'll have two minyanim, and then that's the best way it could be, especially you know, on Pesach, people would have companies. So maybe the ranks of daily minion attendees were uh, 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 inflated. So that, and every year, Cholomai Pesach, that always comes to mind when I'm there, and my custom is to wear tefillin, as are a few of the others, and many people are not wearing tefillin. Um, it's uh, this idea of separating from the community. In a, in a way, maybe it's nice that we've been able to find uh, common ground. Uh, and even when you have enough people for two minyan, it seems that the practice is not necessarily to separate. But there's this idea that we want our, our mitzvah performance is enhanced when it's able to bring people together. And when it divides people, then we should find ways of separating. And, uh, the, 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 we know that Shammai and Hillel, and the school of Shammai and the school of Hillel had major differences. Uh, but the Talmud points out that um, the Talmud points out that they were still able, even with their differences, they, they would marry into each other's families uh, and eat each other's food and uh, and pray together and daven together. So there's this idea that there should be some common ground that we can find even among the differences, uh, and our and our rituals and our mitzvahs are enhanced. Uh, I see the the question was, what about? Isn't it better to have more people? Right, but it's not more, it's not Barov Am. It's not an Am if people are doing different things together. So in a sense, it's, it's, uh, it's, the, it's the opposite. You want, you want as many people as possible who are doing the same thing to come together, but uh, it could be that uh, better to have uh, each distinct entity follow its own practice uh, in, in a case like this. Uh, Barov Am Hadras Malach is why you, should have, uh, you shouldn't have so many breakaway shuls in a, in a community. You want people to come together as often as possible. But uh, that too uh, is, uh, is challenged these days. And I think that part of that challenge is, these, is this tension between individuality versus community. You know, loneliness, a uh, person is able to spend so much time alone who very much has very uh, strong opinions of their sense of self and, the very, and their individuality. Uh, but um, there is this idea that it's not good for people to be alone uh, from uh, from a spiritual perspective, and it's not good for people to be alone from a communal, creating the 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 the, the sense of optimum performance of the rituals of Judaism. They're better performed when more people perform them together. If they have different practices and different minhagim and different uh, tefillin, nusach, etc., then we can have parallel lanes uh, for the different uh, nuances. But overall, we're looking for people to come together.
And Rabbi Jonathan Sachs captures the benefits of this uh, coming together. Source number eight from uh, one of his uh, Parsha uh, uh, Covenant and Conversations. This is called The Social Animal. Ours is a religion of community. Our holiest prayers can only be said in the presence of a minion, the minimum definition of a community. When we pray, we do so as a community. Martin Buber spoke of I and thou, but Judaism is never is really a matter of we and thou. Hence, to atone for the sin the Israelites committed as a community, Moses sought to consecrate community in time and place. And Vayakil, of course, is when they're building the Mishkan, the place, and it also opens with the commandment of Shabbat, time. Everyone is coming together to perform and to perform the mitzvah of Shabbat together and the Mishkan together. This has become one of the fundamental differences between tradition and the contemporary culture of the West. We can trace this in the titles of three landmark books about American society. 1950, David Reisman, Nathan Glazer, and Rural Denny published an insightful book about the changing character of Americans called The Lonely Crowd. In 2000, Robert Putnam of Harvard published Bowling Alone. And accounts have how more Americans than ever were going 10-pin bowling, but fewer were joining bowling clubs and leagues. In 2011, Sherry Turkle of MIT published a book on the impact of smartphones and social networking software called Alone Together. Listen to those titles. They are each about the advancing tide of loneliness, successive stages, and the long extended breakdown of community and modern life. Robert Bell put it eloquently when he wrote that social ecology is damaged not only by war, genocide, and political repression, is also damaged by the destruction of the subtle ties that bind human beings to one another, leaving them frightened and alone. Lotov heyot adam levado. Questions or comments on uh, this thrust in Jewish thought and even in Jewish practice of uh, congregating together, even if society might be going in the other direction. Rabbi? Yes. The Jewish people are a minority religion worldwide, and we have been for many centuries a persecuted religion. My feeling is that we have to do everything in our power to keep strong as we possibly can, and that, I think, would have to require us to be a little more open-minded to people who are necessarily totally uh, in line with our views. Well, I look, you know, there is strength in numbers you know, in terms of how, what communal policy changes might be necessary to strengthen those numbers. That's a bit more of a complicated question. Uh, you kind of, you, the, the um, you know, what's the expression? You don't want your mind to be so open that your brain falls out. Right, the idea of you know we, we don't necessarily certain things can't change, um, and uh, you know obviously choices can be made, but I, I'm not sure that the need the the, the, the ability to maintain a, a certain cohesion or certain strength in numbers necessarily requires changing. Um, you know, part of it requires a certain sense of humility uh, in the face of one's desire for individuality. Right? That I think is where the tension is is to be found. You know, I may want X, Y, and Z that is not found in my community. Well, who, who has to change, the community or me? Uh, but I think that the, 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 the premise is that there are strength in numbers. We want our people to, we, we want people to value the role of community. Now, look, it's, 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 it's an interesting um, development. Like, you know, you read the, it, Sachs mentions, you know, Putnam's bowling alone. I can't really imagine you know, joining a bowling league, but you know, that's that, that, that's there, there's, there's a cultural change as well. Uh, it's not just about you know what you know what 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 people. It's not just about people not wanting to associate. It's, it's about what is their outlet for association. Um, but in general, uh, the, the the balance between the individuality and community uh, is uh, an ongoing. Uh, balancing act. Certain people are more inclined to join, and certain people are more inclined to be individuals. You know what? What we've seen in some of these sources is a a desire for there to be a connection. The fact that people are seeking connection, whether it be what I call the vertical connection with God, you know, or the horizontal connection with other people, that seems to be hardwired into our uh, spiritual lives and even our religious activities with a number of examples where we see that it's dangerous and detrimental 
you know, mitchayev ben asho. It's not a full. It's not a fully lived life. It's choni uh, amagel. He basically went insane uh, without that ability to connect. And from a spiritual perspective, we must be. We must affiliate. Uh, uh, that's part of who we are. Again, getting back to the, the salvation idea of that, um, that, that 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 covenant of fate. Right? The only sin there is disloyalty. We have to refine. We have to remain loyal. We live in a world that could be taking us in, in different directions, uh, and that we, there we have to try and find the balance. You know, really, where uh, we're going to pivot now is: well, wait a second. What about loneliness? Is it really so terrible? Or maybe there's an element of uh, 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 being alone that is uh, that, that that is is helpful, or maybe even preferable. And we'll see a couple of examples of that uh, of that now. One, uh, the, our launch point will be a Gemara in Yuma, 75a, which isn't express, expressly about loneliness, but it has to do with one's mental well-being. Uh, so is, if there is anxiety in someone's heart, let them quash it, is a verse in Proverbs and Mishle. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Ashi dispute the verse's meaning. One said he should forcefully push it, Yashchena, he should push it out of his mind. One who worries should banish his concerns from his thoughts. And one said it means he should tell someone, Yisichena, uh, of his concerns, which will lower his anxiety. So are you supposed to repress the anxiety? Or are you supposed to address the anxiety by sharing it with others? And one of the views is, no, it should be repressed. It should be pushed away. No, we, we, so if we're going to kind of take it into this... Uh, uh, discussion about loneliness, right? It, 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 loneliness is something that should be solved by addressing it, or is it something to be uh, in? Is it something to be embraced and stick with it? Are we going to hold it? Are we going to hold on to that loneliness? Or are we going to try to resolve the loneliness? Just this idea of, of about when we're in an unstable mental or spiritual situation, uh, is it something to? Uh, Embrace and, and and hold on to it. We're gonna we're we're gonna solve it on our own, or is it something that we're gonna seek the other in finding a way uh, a way through it? There does seem to be a kind of uh, push through it. No, you know, there's no. It doesn't need to be solved. This is something that you hold on to on oneself and uh, and, and and struggle through it. Don't don't solve it. Move through it. And I think that we can apply a similar issue with regards to, to, to loneliness, right? Loneliness, is it meant to be bridged and solved and resolved? Or are we supposed to embrace it and, and find our solution through it? Yes, Howard. A current example is the new quarterback for the Jets, Aaron Rodgers. They say mm -hmm. he went into a dark place. And I don't, I don't know for how many days. And then he came out and decided what he wanted to do for his future. And he's going to be playing for the Jets. So he he did it by himself. He had a problem, and he uh, just an example. All right. all right, look, yeah, you know for sure. <laughs> Are you a Jets fan? What? Are you a Jets fan? No, I'm the other. So team. you know, so, so you so you're 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 a neutral bystander, seeing this as an example of of, of what the Gemara and Yuma say. Terrific. No, but so when, when it comes to loneliness, it, it, it is. It is to be found that there are you know, th th this idea of a spiritual loneliness is something that we encounter uh, you know, f f from uh, you know, some of our you know, spiritual leaders. So, for example, Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook, source number 10, there is no one younger or old with whom I can share my thoughts, who is able to comprehend my viewpoint, and this wearies me greatly. Or, very famously, Rabbi Joseph Salvechik, who wrote The Lonely Man of Faith. I am lonely. Source 11. I am lonely because at times I feel rejected and thrust away by everybody. Not excluding my most intimate friends. In the words of the psalmist, my father and mother have forsaken me, ring quite often in my ears, like the planting cooing of the turtle dove. Anyway, Rabbi Salvechik's, that whole lonely man of faith is about uh, that the example he talks about Adam one and Adam two and about how you know really we are in the model of that second Adam who was looking to connect, going back to our you know initial source in, in Bereshit it's not good for man to be alone, the idea that we are always seeking to connect uh, to find assistance to find guidance to find serenity to find completion we're not whole without connecting to God and to the other, 
and that but the the the, the religious individual is going to be seeking uh, and will find themselves lonely because there are so many religious questions that require answering and are not so simple uh, to easily resolve. It's built into the, the Jewish condition from, from Avraham. What was Avraham? He was referred to as Ivri. Avraham was from, he crossed over. Avraham was from one side and everyone else was on the other side. And so Rav Salvechik and the Lonely Man of Faith presents it in a way that um, that he, he feels it's almost a natural state, this feeling of loneliness. Um, he talks about he, in different times about how he felt uh, in, similar to Rav Cook, the inability to connect fully and spiritually with others, including his students. Uh, and, and so maybe trying to bridge that existential loneliness is part of the Jewish condition. Uh, and and th this is something that is noted, for example, by Rav Enu Bachia. Right, and we talk about Avram being different. Think of the patriarchs and some of our main characters in uh, the Torah and throughout Tanakh as being loners, right? You know, Moshe, uh, Elio Hanavi. There's always a sense of uh, of loneliness uh, by the spiritual seeker and the spiritual leader. Source number twelve. Uh, we're talking about uh, the shepherds in the scripture. You'll find that most righteous people are shepherds. Abel, Moses, Prophet Samuel, Saul, as well as David, all were shepherds. They distance themselves from settlements because many sins are the direct result of people living together in society, like gossip, slander, false oaths, sexual morality, thievery, and violence. A person separating from society escapes such sins, and distancing oneself from settlements involves distancing oneself from transgression, from thievery, violence, and all manner of sins. Consider what happened to Lot, right? Uh, Lot, after living in the city of Sodom, right? He decided to choose to move away out of the wilderness with Avraham. And he went to Sodom, and he had to then he left Sodom, lest he be killed by the, for the other residents' transgressions. So he left there for the mountains. Where did he escape? He went to the mountains. And also because the mountains are a place for prophetic heat bodedut, uh, solitude, where nothing else will direct a person from thoughts of the blessed name. This, you know, so Rabbeinu Bachia recognizes in some of our biblical characters, yes, the need to interact, but the dangers of such interaction. And he mentions this, the, the, the term kit bodedut, that, that, that type of spiritual uh, solitude, which is where nevua, where prophecy uh, emerges from. And this, of course, was something that uh, <clears throat> the Vilna Gon, excuse me, not the Vilna Gon, we'll get to the Vilna Gon in a minute, it's a different type of uh, uh, solitude, but the uh, Rav Nachman of Breslov. Rav Nachman of Breslov uh, but often uh, talks about this idea of Hitzbodedut, source number 13, to return and be encompassed in the oneness of God. This is possible only through bitul, self-negation. A person has to completely negate himself until he is encompassed as the one, in the oneness of God. And the only way to attain bitul is through Hitzbodedut, by secluding himself and speaking at length with his creator through, the, through this, a person merits negating all his physical desires and bad character traits to the point where he merits negating all his corporal reality and is encompassed in his source. Right, the, 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 the Rav Nachman of Wrestle have encouraged taking long walks, sometimes long walks in a cemetery, uh, being in, in very solitary places to, so that a person would recognize that they are insignificant and in being totally in, 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 encompassed by the divine. So while we are very social uh, and while we, it's not good to be alone, maybe sometimes you have to be alone. And so maybe it's the preferred state for then being able to uh, optimize one's spiritual, religious, even emotional state in order to engage. And uh, so this, you know, so maybe it could be that maybe, you know, like uh, Howard mentioned, Aaron Rodgers, maybe he was a breast lover hustle. They do a good job of giving out their books all over the place, those little uh, booklets. So it's, uh, you know, so it's helpful for them to have that. So, you know, they, they, there is a certain type of loneliness. And again, it's it, being part of the community is essential. Being part of the community, we, we built it up and, 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 and had, uh, the presentation that for one's uh, one's spiritual sense and one's religious sense and one's observant sense, the connection is key. At the same time, there is a certain element of being alone and solitary that might be hard to shake because that could also be part of the, the default spiritual position that can be embraced to improve or enhance one's uh, religious uh, and uh, uh, one's religious life. The Vilna Gon, uh, it, it seems to embrace this type of uh, solitary uh, existence. Um, 
Uh, he, he seems to be the, uh, as would be expected, right? We know the Vilna Gaon was from that, uh, the Torah movement, the intellectual movement, the non-Hasidic movement. So uh, he, he, he definitely sounds like the, the leader and inspiration for that non-Hasidic movement, uh, the way he talks about uh, in, in source 14, while Rabbi Nachman of Breslov sees he's both the dude being alone as the opportunity to elevate oneself spiritually. Here, Vilna Gon is when giving advice to his uh, to, to his family and students concerning solitude, one should not leave home. Tasvishalom, heaven forbid you should leave home. Even your visit to the synagogue should be very short. In fact, it's better to pray at home, for it's impossible to be spared from jealousy or from hearing idle talk or evil speech in the synagogue. And one receives punishment for this. As we find also one who hears vulgar speech remains silent is punished. This is even more so on Shabbos and holidays when they gather to talk. I think he's talking about Kiddush. Uh, it is then better that you don't pray at all. So yeah. the, the, this is a, you know, a, a certain type of uh, anti-social tendency that, uh, the, that the, the Vilna Gond is expressing, not from a, a loneliness, not to elevate oneself spiritually, but you know, loneliness to protect oneself from the negative influences religiously, even technically. You know, it, it's a letter. It's not a sak halacha, but it's basically better not to daven than daven a shul where there's going to be idle chatter. Right? No one would ever come to shul uh, if that was the case. But, you know, so we, we recognize that the engagement and the public nature and the communal nature and the fraternal nature of Judaism, as everything we saw previously, uh, it, it can, it, 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 it is uh, at the same time a double-edged sword. It's the optimal fulfillment of everything that being Jewish is. At the same time, it can undermine it all uh, if it's not the, 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 the right type of community, uh, says the Vilna Go. Questions, reactions to the heat the, the, uh, or, or the advantages of uh, solitude from a spiritual perspective uh, as uh, through the prism of the Rabbi Nachman or the Vilna Gaon. Rabbi? Yes. I believe in Christian theology. There was one of their forefathers, maybe Aquinas, who was noted for his life of solitude. And he's idolized for that aspect. Uh, I would say as a factual, pra pragmatic analysis, most people would be better off with a, a help of others, living a life with others rather than in solitude most of the time. Whereas possibly on occasion, being alone can be helpful, but most of the time, being with others and is, is, is a more helpful to uh, 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 so. Uh, so, so look, you, you, the, the idea of, you know, it, it, it makes sense that, that the, first way, the fact that there'd be kind of a certain solitude uh, thrust in Christianity wouldn't be surprising. Um, you know, it, it is a more withdrawn, uh, withdrawing from this world, uh, which you know, has uh, expression in Judaism also. But this idea in terms of reality versus ideal, right? The, the, the Vilna Gaon seems to be very much an idealist and would encourage if you can't find the, if you can't find the optimal society, then relate to nobody altogether. While, you know, for most people that, that, that that's not possible. So, you know, so I think that it's true that I think the Vilna Gaon, this might be a little bit of um, uh, an oratory, it's not speech, but in the letter, it might be a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a polemical flourish. Uh, but we, we see that as much as Judaism is a social religion, is a communal religion, there is this idea that there's a bit of a, uh, there, there, there is some advantage to the loneliness, whether it be a spiritual uh, attainment or whether it be that, that, that it pushes a person to seek out the right type of connections and the right type of community. Or uh, if you find yourself, you know, the way, I think in the way, you know, Ruff Cook describes it, you know, you, you, you are, your, your religious journey sometimes means you feel alone, you know, that might propel you further along that journey, whether it be to find others or to find out why one continues to be alone. And, and here too, you know, we, we concluded uh, with Rabbi Sachs with regards to the community. Here too, Rabbi Sachs, with regards to loneliness and faith source 15, I believe that isolation contains within its spiritual possibilities. We can use it to deepen our spirituality. We can read the book of Psalms, re-engage with some of the greatest religious poetry the world has ever known. 
We can pray more deeply from the heart and we can find solace in the stories of Moses and others who had moments of despair, but who came through them, their faith strengthened by their intense encounter with the divine. It is when we feel most alone that we discover that we are not alone for you are with me. And I'm sure it would not be surprising to know that this was uh, this essay was written during the pandemic when this idea of being separated and being apart and being alone, uh, those feelings were magnified uh, by the situation. So uh, there, there, there is, uh, there, there, is a, a there is a dangerous loneliness. There can be a developmental helpful loneliness. There's the need for community. There's the, the, the cautionary tale of the community. Uh, I think for the most part, I don't think Judaism would be very interested in uh, undertaking the experiment uh, about 500 days in a cave. Uh, I think in general, Judaism is meant to be experienced within community. You know, this idea, you know, we talked before, uh, once upon a time, where, you know, be, being a Jewish astronaut is not necessarily what Judaism expected, to find oneself in a situation where one is either removed from community or removed from the ability to regularly perform its work. Um, uh, Judaism you know, recognizes the fact that you sometimes live in areas where there aren't full amounts of Jews, right? The, the, the whole discussion in Masechet Megillah about reading the Megillah on different days because people lived in communities that didn't have a minion, that can be a reality. But for the most part, there is this, this pull of community that provides a certain backdrop for the optimal performance of mitzvot while recognizing that there's a danger in being part of a community or, or a community that's not that has different components because uh, it could divert a person's spiritual attention, religious identification or mitzvah performance, or maybe just too much talking and sure that comes from it. Uh, and uh, wh while we embrace and uh, mandate uh, and require one to be part of a community, we can see sometimes that a few moments of alone time uh, can be helpful. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world.